So I have early memories of identifying as a male, but I didn't understand what it meant. A controversial subject that many here in Nebraska don't discuss. Our top story, what it's like to be transgender and live in Nebraska. You may have heard of the Brandon Tina story and the movie Boys Don't Cry. Recently, the 8th Circuit Court of Appeals denied an appeal by one of the teen's killers. Good evening. I'm Bridget Bargen. Owen Jensen is off tonight. Now, many of you left comments on our website about a lack of awareness for transgender issues in the state, so we decided to work to change that. In a special report, 1011's Bonnie Bowman brings us the story of a Nebraska man who started life in a woman's body and how he struggled for acceptance. Looking at these pictures, you may not see Ryan Salins, but he sees himself as he started life. A daughter and a sister, now a son and a brother. It's an identity that started to form when he was very young. My dad and my brother would be in swimming trunks, and I would see that, and my mom always put me a little two-piece when I was little, and so I always took the top off, because I wanted to be like my dad and my brother. Uh, so I have early memories of identifying as a male, but I didn't understand what it meant. Described as a tomboy when he was little, Ryan was teased as a teen and struggled to develop in a gender he couldn't connect with. Body image issues led to severe battles with anorexia and bulimia, but it was in his recovery in therapy that Ryan first started to find who he was. My first step in looking at sexuality was uh, admitting to myself that I had a true attraction to women. And I was scared of that too because I was scared to label lesbian because when you hear the term lesbian, you think two women together, and I did not feel like a woman. I didn't understand what that meant, but I didn't feel like that. When he was 24, while browsing in the transgender section of a bookstore, the pieces of Ryan's puzzle fell into place. And I saw all these pictures, and I knew that was me. I just knew it. everything that I struggled with clicked into place. And five months later, I began my transition. He describes that time as exhilarating but scary, with his full transition taking three years. Psychotherapist Megan Smith says many of her trans patients focus on others' reactions. Usually a lot of our sessions are around how other people are going to cope. Um, and then in relation, how are they going to cope with other people's reactions? My dad refused to talk to me. Um, that's his way to deal with things that are really hard that he doesn't understand he's scared of. He just kind of shuts it out. So for six months, I didn't talk to him at all. And he removed all my pictures off the walls and all my stuff out of the house. It took four years for Ryan's parents to start using his new name and the male pronoun. Do I think that they totally accept me and want to be a part of my life? No. Um, I, I just, I don't think it's ever going to be possible. The suicide and depression rates in the trans community are very high. Smith says that's because there's still such a stigma attached to being transgender. If you are isolated or if, if you have been rejected or have been ostracized by your community, your religious institutions, your schools, your family, um, that can be a really lonely place. A really lonely place to be. There's also a lot of fear. Nebraska doesn't have non-discrimination laws protecting gender identity or sexual orientation. A lot of people live with the fear that they're going to lose their job uh, or that they're not going to get hired for a job um, or they're going to be denied housing because of their trans identity. And depending on where they live, some transgender Nebraskans may struggle with access to both physical and mental health care. We definitely have um, some great doctors and great therapists here in Nebraska. We have some great support groups, um, but it, it's very limited. Ryan says in the future, he'd like to see more resources for transgender residents and their families so others can become the person they feel on the inside, just like he did. I feel like my struggles with depression, I feel like my struggles with the eating disorder were all outward signs of me trying to deny who I was. It's pretty amazing what happens when you honor what's real inside of you that you're scared of. Reporting in Omaha, Bonnie Bowman, 1011 News.